Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay. Now you might be wondering why I'm showing a footage there of Chris Thompson winning the recent British Olympic trials at Kew Gardens. Well the main reason is I was curious to see that his marathon PB there was some seven years after he did his first marathon. So I thought it'd be interesting today to do a bit of a statistical one to see how many years of improvement are you likely to have. So first of all I did a bit of an internet search to see what I could see is the most likely spans and here's a couple of articles that I found. So here's one from Runner's World and there are 25 golden rules of distance running and rule number 12 is the seven year rule where basically they say that runners will improve for about seven years. And this one is also from Runner's World. Somebody is writing in to ask, I've read that a new runner can expect about five years of PRs in their future, no matter what age. And in reply, they talk about a magic five-year window, not seven, of improvement in running times. So just to confirm what I was saying earlier about Chris Thompson, here is his profile on, on Power of 10. And you can see in the marathon here, he did his first one, 2.11.19 in 2014. And that, interesting was his best time until that recent 2.10.52 in the Olympic trials. So his span of improvement in the marathon is seven years. So if we look at my friend Steve Way, he did his first marathon in 2008, but his PB came in 2014. So that's a six-year improvement range in the marathon. So in, in contrast, if we look up Paula Radcliffe, who undoubtedly is, is Britain's finest ever marathon runner and probably most likely will be for the foreseeable future. But interestingly, if we scroll down to her marathons, her first one came in the London Marathon in 2002, but her best marathon was literally a year later, which was the then world record in the 2003 London Marathon. So her range of improvement was literally only one year, although she did carry on and compete in some couple of further Olympic Games some years later and eventually did her final race in 2015. So in contrast, I found this guy who's in the 100 Marathon Club, so clearly a prolific marathon runner. And his first race was in 2001 here of 420 when he was still quite a young athlete. But he didn't actually do his PB until he did a sub three in 2018, some 17 years later. So it just goes to show that a long range of improvement is possible. So what I thought I would do is look at all the data on Power of 10 and Runbeat Rankings to see if I could sort of see some trends. So what I did using Power of 10 and Runbeat and Rankings data is to see how I could plot out a, a graph of how many years of improvement runners can typically have at the marathon. So to do that, I used a criteria of somebody who'd done a PB in or before 2018, which kind of implies that they may have peaked. And the data we have starts from about 2002. So there's a fairly long span of time. And to make sure that these people weren't just one-off, so I made sure that they'd done at least four marathons. Now that resulted in a sample size of just over 5,000 runners. So this graph here, the green line, is the number of runners who did a PB this many years after their first one. So literally these ones here did naught years. That means they did a PB in the first year that they actually did their marathon. Now, Chris Thompson would have been a good example of that. Had he not done that PB in the Olympic trials the other week, his PB would have been his first race. And so he would have had a score of zero years. Paula Radcliffe, don't forget, remember, had a score of one year, and it's actually the same score as me. I did my first marathon in 2004, and my PB was, was a year later, and I never got any better, so my score will be one as well. So the blue lines here represent a cumulative figure, all these things, and the green line is the number of individual percentages each year. So you can see here, the first one, about 11% of all these runners did their PB in their first year of running, and then one year later, it was a bit more. And the peak kind of seems to come around two and three years. And then four and five is still quite a lot. And then six and seven. Now, this rather ties in with those two Runners World articles where they're saying most people do a PB within five to seven years of when they start. And as you can see here at the seven-year mark, we've got 93% of runners have come in there. And then as we go on and go on, it gets closer and closer to everybody. So after about 16 years, that's kind of how I run out of data, then is hardly anybody's doing a PB over that length of duration. Now you might think, is this just something to do with good runners? But, but so what I thought I would do is I would also look at sub three and sub four marathon runners and, and plot the same things and see if the distributions were the same. Well, basically the general shape is the same here. The green line here is the sub three line. And this gray line here is the sub four. These are all the people that have done a PB 
that was at least under four hours. And you can see it's a very similar pattern. It sort of rises to a peak after two or three years and then quickly drops off until around about seven, eight, nine years. Nearly everybody has done their PB. And you still get a few people that exceptionally carry on doing PBs, but it gets fewer and fewer. Now I also look to see whether there's any difference in gender or how old people were when they did their PB. So what I did here is I split it down into male and female and also runners who did their PB when they're either under 40 or over 40. And it, it, I don't really need to point out which are the different lines here because the, the key point is all these lines follow a very similar pattern. So I think I can confidently say that there's no obvious bias between gender or age. So what about if we look at different events? Well, as, look, as well as the marathon, I also looked at park run and also took any distance. So here I was looking to see the time between your first performance and what I perceived as being your best performance. And I used the Run Britain rankings handicap data scheme to work out what was your best performance. It's a bit like a pseudo age grading thing. So you can see that the shape of the graphs are very similar. The green line here is the sub three graph. This brown line in the middle is for any distance. And this reddish brown one at the top is for part run. And you can see again, there's a very similar distribution of the curves here, where you can see that most people are doing PBs after two or three years and it quickly drops off. So I hope you appreciated that little insight into how long you can realistically hope to improve. Now I would caveat that by saying that if you continue to progress your training, and I think you can improve for a lot longer time as that 100 marathon guy proved. And when I asked people in the sub three group, a lot of people have started with quite slow marathons where they hadn't really been training properly, but they progressed their training year on year. And, that, and there were some people that were seeing improvement ranges into the good 10 plus years. So it certainly shows with hard work and dedication, you can buck the trend in these things. But you know, the data doesn't really lie, I don't think. So it's quite clear that those rules of thumb of five or seven years of improvement do have some merit when I actually look at the data. So I'm interested to know how long you've improved for and whether you strike a chord with these findings. So I hope you found this interesting. Like and subscribe on all that. And I look forward to seeing you the next one then. Bye.